but so, something that came up in class today um, is the concept of cross contour. And I think a lot of you may be frustrated when you're using um, these pencils, um, if you're using watercolor pencil or if you're using Prismacolor pencil. What happens quite often is that um, you'll put down a color and you'll make a nice shape. Let's say we're going to do a leaf or something here, right? So you've got your idea going here. Then when you go in to color this leaf, if you go in and you color like this, you're doing what's called hatching, right? Hatching goes this direction, right? And cross hatching goes in a 45 degree angle to that so that you're working across it, right? So hatching and cross hatching are, are the ways that most people fill in spaces. Either that or they just go in and they kind of scribble to fill things up. You guys are beyond scribbling now because um, you've probably realized that this doesn't have anything to do with that and it makes it sort of look amateur and you don't really want that to happen. Maybe that's the reason some of you are pressing really darkly is to try to even out some of those things so that you're getting that. But then you don't have a lot of control over whether you want to do a light or a dark or a very subtle kind of tone, right? Um, Gamsol is, is in your markers. So if you guys take your colorless blender, in fact, I have a colorless blender here. Um, I don't use my colorless blender to try to blend markers. I think it's kind of a waste of time. It doesn't really do much. I use the next lighter marker. So if I'm doing a dark blue, then I'll go to the next lighter blue to sort of blend it and wash it out to the lighter color. Um, but these are the markers that you guys got in your um, sketching one and sketching two classes. This is basically just a colorless blender. If I take it into this green here, what it does is it melts the wax of the Prismacolor and it sinks it down into the paper. So I can take this marker, I can even start painting with it and sort of draw some of that waxy color out of there. That way I can keep this light and get sort of a watercolory wash over top of this. Now one problem with this is that you're going to go through um, these quite quickly. You can see how it stained the end of the, uh, where am I going here? You can see how it stained the end of my marker. So I have to go like this and, until I wipe it out and wipe it out and wipe it out until it, it goes white again. Now, even though I have that color in the end of my marker, it'll do a colorless. See how I can draw a colorless again on there? So I need to wipe it out on a piece of cardboard or a piece of watercolor paper every time um, I use it and try and get all that waxy stuff out of there. But it's basically going to kill your, um, it's going to kill your markers. So what I would recommend is that you take a Q-tip or a paintbrush and you get some Gamsol from the store um, if you want to, if you want to continue painting like this. I'm just dipping this into the mineral spirits. Mineral spirits, Gamsol are both the same thing. It's also marker juice, whatever you want to call it. I can take this now and I can actually paint with this and it melts that wax up and I can kind of do whatever I want with it that way, right? Then once I get something happening that I think is more interesting, or even if I want to lighten this up, I can scrub this out, and sort of release some of that darkness in there. I can then go on top of that again with my pencil to create whatever it is I want to happen in there and then I can go and soften it again as I want. So that's basically what that video is about and you can find all kinds of um, tutorials on how to use Gamsol. There's a lot of people that use this um, from the craft business to the to the um, to the fine arts and interior designers certainly use it because you've got all those markers. So it may be worth it to you to have a can or a bottle of this uh, come from the store, pick that up um, when you get a chance. If you want to keep coloring this way, 
Um, you can recover from darks. There's a lot of you who feel like once you get dark, you can't go light again. But if I let this dry, I can take a lighter color over that and I can actually change the way that you see that. One thing that I might want to do instead of that is actually take a yellow because green is a function of blue and yellow and go over that with a yellow and lighten it even more. See what happens if I put these really light things on top. It's not going to change it that much, but it's going to help. Okay. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about was cross contour. So this leaf looks kind of flat and scribbly. The, the concept is that every plane moves in two dimensions, right? So when you're drawing a sofa, for instance, and let's say this is the seat and this is the back of the sofa, the end, this end of the sofa moves in two dimensions. They are vertical and vanishing point right. So when you're laying down markers here, or if you're laying down pencils, if you'll move your pencil in the direction that the plane is going. So if I was to do this plane here in orange and I was to do that in marker, I would take my marker and I would move my marker off towards vanishing point left, right? Chipping it in against this end here. Or I would move it straight up and down because that's the direction that this panel moves. And if I do that, then even if I have the stripiness, I know a lot of you guys are frustrated with the stripiness of these markers, but even if it goes in a stripy kind of thing, or even if this pencil lays down in sort of a way that everybody can see all the marks I make, if I'm coloring this way and then I'm coloring this way or laying down the, the materials in a vertical and a vanishing point right, this would go vanishing point left and vanishing point right, right? And this would go with the tilt to the back and vanishing point left. So if I'm laying my colors down that way, then I'm, I'm doing a cross contour and the contour of these planes tells me this is one contour here and this is the cross contour going here. So that's where the, the hatching and cross hatching come from, but it only works on this plane here. If I start drawing a cup, for instance, or a vase, and I want to make a cylinder and I start hatching and cross hatching in here, I'm denying the perspective that I created in that cylinder, right? If I start going and coloring this in like a cross contour this way and a contour this way, then I'm reinforcing the perspective, yeah? When this comes to leaves, then I might say, okay, this line here tells me I can move my pencil in this direction, but there's also a cross contour that moves across this way right here. So that if I start thinking about this leaf going across this way and then down into that divot then up over here, I'm gonna to start to get some form to this leaf that didn't exist before, right? Then when it's time for light and shadow, I'm gonna say my light's coming from that direction. So I'm gonna pop a little bit of light up over here and a little bit of light here and that's going to allow this to fall away from the light into the crack. So I might come over here and say this side is in the light and this side is in the light. So now I've got light hitting here and here and then these are curving away and falling just like this uh, cylinder here you were taught has a shadow core right here the light's coming this direction. So this is where it moves from light into dark. So you want to have a shadow core right along there and a lighter here and a darker here and a reflected light there and then a cast shadow down on the table, right? That happens in this leaf too. So if I take here and put a little cross contour across that, it's going to make that look even rounder, right? Then if I want to take my Gamsol and sort of smooth all that out, I can. Or if I want to leave it linear, I can do that too. I'm not, um, actually I'm not a big fan of smoothing everything out and once I smooth it out I find that it feels sort of blah again because I don't have contrast of line in there. So I probably would go back in with some of this 
and pop the line up once in a while so that I'm getting some darks and some lights, some lines and some contrast in there the way I want it to. Okay, so this leaf through several steps has come to looking much more interesting, if not even much more realistic than what I started out with my scribbling.